What's going on guys? One four here. I have a new video for you. I know it's been a while. I apologize for the gaps in my uploads lately. I'm sorry that I've been so flaky with it. Um, and also with the delays in responding to comments on my channel, but I have a new video for you today and it's not a gun video. It's not a gun setup video. You're just going to have to wait. It's yet another gear video. Um, I built a new plate carrier. I sold the 1961 to a teammate, and I went back to my old roots, man. And it feels good to be home. It feels real good to be home, man. I, um, basically, this was a fluke. Um, it was basically it's a series of unprecedented deals. Um, I've been playing Airsoft for, I think, a couple years now. And I've had some good deals in my day, but none even come remotely close to the one that I'm about to hit you guys to right now. Um, I was on the Ebays, and I came across the plate carrier that you see in front of you. Now, this was sold to me as a Patriot Precision Materials tactical carrier vest without soft armor. But on the inside, on the tag, it says Tactical Assault Systems. I don't know. I know that the, the world of American-made, like, real steel kit gets weird and that people borrow um, designs from each other all the time and so on and so forth. And so uh, I'm just going to call it a TCV for the rest of the video. But basically what it is is it's, a, um, it's an armor carrier system, which means it, has, it, ha it can house both sappy plates and soft armor. Now, there isn't any soft armor in it right now. I think I may buy some in the future. But um, the, the fact that it's designed for soft armor will explain a lot of the perceived bulkiness of this vest. In particular, up here by the uh, shoulder straps, like all that extra material right there, that's for housing soft armor. Sorry, my hand got a little bit in the way there. But um, it's for housing soft armor. Now, that being said, it's a, medium, it's a bigger sized vest. It's cut for medium sized uh, sappy plates, but I personally have no issues maneuvering. I have no issues, you know, using my arms and shouldering my weapon and so forth. So I'm so far very happy with it. Um, I've also taken some liberties with this plate carrier. You know, I, I'm not using it for an impression. So I added some things to it that perhaps are a little bit un unorthodox, but it works for me, man. So I, um, I incorporated some things from other kits into this, uh, into this plate carrier. So Basically, um, what attracted me to this plate carrier, besides the price tag, which was absurdly low, uh, this is also, by the way, a real steel plate carrier. There is uh, at least one reference picture that I'm aware of, of somebody, just some army cool guy from back in, I think, about 2007 wearing one of these. And um, I, I picked it up not only because of the price tag, but because it is kind of an RAV style uh, inspired look to it that is a plate carrier that I've never owned before and I wanted to see how it feels and so far I'm very very happy with it so a little bit of a uh, little bit of inspired CAG swag in this video um, but nothing really too major no like you know there you won't see any paraclete or any cry stuff in this video but um, but you will see lots of eagle so if you don't like eagle you might as well turn this off now so I'll just get to it stop rambling um, same procedure as per usual go from top to bottom Underneath, um, the soft armor comes up to about here, and similarly on the back. This thing, it, it fits like soft armor, obviously. There's more coverage to it um, to protect from smaller caliber rounds, but at the same time, it has all the webbing, and it's made out of Cordura, so it's like, you know, your soft armor plate carrier or whatever. So, um, you know, most people are used to seeing stuff like 6094s that are designed for just carrying sappy plates and only have as much material as what's needed to do so. But anyway, um, for, ex for extra padding, I added some Eagle Industry scalable plate carrier um, shoulder pads here. They actually meshed really nicely with this vest, uh, surprisingly, better than I expected. Um, the padding continues here onto the back, and then also up front, it's also right there. Um, and it, uh, it it works out quite well. It's Obviously, it's Coyote. The the color of this vest looks like it's uh, khaki, but it's actually wheat. These pouches down here are khaki. Uh, that is SFLCS um, issued 
kit down there that's all in khaki. So you get an idea of the difference in colors on this carrier. Um, moving down up front, obviously the big moto American flag patch, you know, going for a little bit of the CAG swag. Uh, same Kenwood speaker mic, Let's just run through a piece of webbing there that's attached to my puxing, which is over here. Um, from right to left, uh, and I will show you the back panel, starting over here, I have a specialty defense systems IFAC. Uh, I don't have any real medical stuff in here. This is just for holding like wounded rags for milsims. I have NKDA written on it, uh, no known uh, drug allergies, and that's true. I don't have any uh, known drug allergies. And, you know, some people scoff at this type of thing like, oh, NKDA, putting your blood type patch on or whatever this, you know, stop trying to be such a cool guy. Look, I actually think that if you were to have yourself injured at an airsoft event or milsim or whatever, you know, why not have NKDA on your kit? Why not have your blood type on your kit? You never know when you're going to be in trouble and, and you want to be able to help the paramedics be able to help you as quickly as possible. So if you don't have any known drug allergies or if you do have any drug allergies, you should write them on your IFAC or have some sort of patch indicating that you have it, especially if you're a more serious gamer. Um, Moving over here to the left, I have a uh, Fort Bragg Eagle um, M4 pouch. It's a single pouch, and it has uh, Kydex on the inside that's kind of coated in a sort of velvet. Um, and it's just a quick draw pouch. I obviously carry other uh, quick draw pouches on my first line. Um, I guess it's really not obvious to most viewers because I haven't done a first line video in months. But yeah, I, I long story short, I have other quick draw pouches on my first line, but sometimes when you're in a, a pinch, you know, you have, you might need more than what's just on your first line. So there's that there. Um, moving to the left, I have a double SFLCS, Special Forces Load Carrying System, um, Eagle Pouch in khaki. This is the type of stuff that was really popular with like the SEALs and other units, you know, a couple of years ago before everything was in AOR1 and multicam and so on and so forth. So back when people were still running plain color pouches, this is what they were using. And these are pretty dirty. There is some remnants of some foreign country rubbed into these, uh, maybe this pouch more more so, but again, another SFLCS pouch over there, um, and that is obviously the uh, P-Star tube there, and uh, I know that ruins it for a lot of people, I'm sorry guys, I really am, um, and then moving to the left, I have a fly embitter pouch with the uh, puxing on the inside, Now, some of you might be asking, 1-4, I know that the puxing isn't that big of a radio, how is it sitting up that high in the pouch? And I'll tell you, some people use foam, some people use newspaper, some people use uh, paper towels. I did none of that. I went into my sock drawer, I found some old socks that I don't wear anymore, I just stuffed three of those bad boys down in there. That way this thing isn't way down in the bottom of the, in the, uh, in the, bottom of the pouch, I can adjust things easily, yada, yada, yada. Now, here's something that um, was stolen from another YouTuber. It's a, uh, this is a USMC, issue a uh, grenade pouch in Coyote um, that Coyote Brown that has as you could see a second ago a dead rag on the inside I saw that in Islander Boys RBAV video I thought it was a great idea so I just decided to put it on there um, so that just about does it for the first uh, for the front panel as you can see you know on the inside inside of the cummerbund there is extra space for soft armor um, there is no inner cummerbund that is I guess I don't really know how I feel about that you know, the way that it is right now is it sits really nicely on my hips, uh, where the cummerbund is adjusted now, uh, where it is adjusted now, rather. Um, so I guess it doesn't really necessitate an inner cummerbund, but that the inner cummerbund is something that is seen frequently with this style of vest. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut for a second, turn this thing around, show you the back panel, and also show you how the cummerbund attaches to this carrier. Stay tuned.